Hello everyone, welcome, thanks for coming along. I think we'll kick it off. Um, I think people have stopped coming in. So my name's Cameron, uh, I work for Acquia, I'm a solutions architect and today I'm going to be talking about the developer tools that Acquia offers as part of its uh, managed hosting service, Acquia Cloud and some of the other tools around that. Um, and I am going to act as though I am a CTO or a technical leader at a company who understands technology and coding and the command line but maybe isn't quite as familiar with Drupal uh, and with Acquia tools. So like, hopefully like some of you are. I'm also going to pretend to be Acquia support. So when you see me wear this hat, I'm a different person. That'll all come out in due course. Let's have a couple of people coming in. Okay. So, setting the scene, it's a Thursday night. Uh, my developers are all away at DrupalCon Barcelona, and I've got tickets to go and see Secret Cinema. I'm going to dress up as a X-Wing pilot, and I'm going to have a good time. Everything's quiet at work, nothing's going wrong, I'm feeling good. Um, we've got a few things coming up next week, but for now, everything's fine. So, I want to get out of here by five today. You know, I want to make sure everything's working. Then my boss comes around the corner. He says, there's something wrong with the site and you need to look at it. And there's no way that you're leaving this place until it's fixed. And this is how it makes me feel. Okay, so I'm gonna go and I'm gonna look at the site. So let me just open up my browser here. Oh. Sorry guys, I just have to close down PowerPoint here for a second. Technical difficulties. Now I've got it bookmarked, so let me open it up and see what's happening here. Okay, so obviously I don't really want to have a rickroll uh, sitting on the top of my site. It seems like one of my developers has left a nice little present for me uh, before they went away, and I'm going to have to figure out how to fix this. So what am I going to do? Well, what I did know is that when Acquia uh, brought us onto the platform, I attended the onboarding call, and they gave me access uh, to the platform. Uh, so I've got to log in, I can look at things, and what I need to do is get in there, figure out how to edit the code, figure out how to test the code, and then obviously push the code live so that that rickroll is gone from the site. So let's check that out, shall we? So I go to the Acquia site, and... I open up my login, and this is the page that I see. So as an Acquia customer, we get production and staging and development environments by default. And I can see here that the uh, developers left something for me. Um, and what I want to do is check this locally. So I don't want to edit it directly on the server because there'd be dragons. But what I might want to do is, is grab a copy of the code, work on it in my local environment. So another thing that was offered to me as I was onboarded to Acquia was something called Acquia Dev Desktop. And so if I open that up, what we see here is a, a local development environment that integrates Apache and MySQL and PHP, but it's also integrated with a lot of the Acquia Cloud tools. So it's aware of Acquia Cloud and my hosting. Uh, it's aware of the Git uh, repositories that sit behind at Queer Cloud, and I can interact with that directly from here. So in this case, as I'm logged in, and I've got both of my sites hosted in Acquia Cloud, uh, I can see that each has a dev, stage, and production environment. So what I want to do is bring the code down to my local machine so that I can work on it. So if I look here, I can say, with the local workflow, I want to pull from the cloud development environment. And if I click here, I can say, I'm going to pull down just the code. I'm not too worried about the database and files for now. I'm fairly confident that it's just a, an error in the code. So if I click this big shiny button here, Dev Desktop will handle all of the stuff around Git to do with my SSH key, uh, you know, connecting into Acquia Cloud, pulling from the right repository, and syncing. So I've got a local environment. And then I'll have a copy of the site running locally. So if I click on this, we should see the site booting up and running locally. So now I need to edit that in my development environment. So 
I open up my IDE, and very quickly when I look at this template file, I can see that uh, there's a big issue here. This is a, an embedded iframe with a YouTube in it. That's not what I want. So let me go ahead and delete that. And I'll just... Uh, that looks good. Okay. Pop back into the dev desktop. And now what I want to do, having edited it locally, is push it all the way back up, um, back into the Acqua Cloud, so I can test it, so that if it looks good, I can then push it back out to production. So in this case, I'm going to use the dev desktop, and I'm going to push to the cloud, uh, and, I, and I've only edited the code, so I'm going to push that up, uh, only push the code up, not the rest of the components of the Drupal site. You can also see that this little uh, set of options here allows us to control some of the aspects of the cloud directly from the dev desktop, so I could clear the cache, or I could run update PHP, whatever that means. Uh, and that'll all happen as a result of pushing the big shiny button. So we'll sync up with Acquia Cloud. And I'll get a little uh, window, which is a, a look-in to Git. So if I don't want to learn Git, uh, I just want to work with it within uh, a friendly environment that's kind of safe and sanitized. Um, I can do that completely within Dev Desktop. So I select all the files that I want to commit, and if you understand version control, this will be very uh, straightforward, but I'm going to add a message and say, uh, removed vandalism. Add the message, so that means that the next developer that comes along to see whatever my change is will, will have some idea when they look at the log about what I did. So I hit commit, and this will synchronize my local code right up uh, to development. And as I said, uh, Dev Desktop's instructed at Quick Cloud to clear off the caches so that when I go and check the site to see that it's working, uh, we should see everything um, as new. We're not we're not reading a cache copy of the of the page. So, time to test. If I jump back into Safari. Um, let's have a look here. I'm going to open up my uh, development environment. And so this is not exactly what I was hoping to see. What I'm seeing is a white screen of death. Now, that's not um, what I hope to see. So let's just summarise where we're at. So... I sync locally with Acquia Dev Desktop. I edited the code, that all worked. Then I pushed the code up to Dev for testing. Now that I've tested it, I see a white screen of Dev. So what I want to know is how can I actually debug the site? You know, I, It's not my local machine. How am I going to find and read logs on this crazy big system that I don't know a lot about? So having a vague memory of what I was told during the Acquia onboarding and having a poke around the documentation I remember that there's uh, something called log streaming, which allows me to see the logs in real time on my site, on even environments, and you know see if any of the requests that are making are actually kicking off errors or at least writing logs um, to the logs on the Acquia Cloud. So let me show you how that works. Okay. So I'm going to do a little trick here. Now here's my white screen of death. And I'm going to move that over to the right. Here's my Acquia workflow. And I'm going to move that over to the left. Now if I open up the logs, it'll open up the uh, UI that you saw in that little GIF. Um, it's a little bit squash, but I think you get the idea. And within that, I'll be able to choose between those environments that I showed you in the workflow page before. So development, staging, and production, exactly as we discussed, and I can also choose uh, which logs I want to show. So I'm going to go ahead and choose all the ones that seem to look like they might give me errors, so patch error, PHP error, and Drupal watchdog. So if I go back to my white screen of death, and I refresh the page, let's hide that, you can see that immediately we've got a PHP error. So just to confirm that, I'm going to refresh that again. And yes, so we are seeing a PHP error. So let me just 
dig a little bit deeper. So you can see that we've been able to see the log in real time as I've been viewing the site and we've got a message that's kind of useful. So it says call to undefined function etch, uh, which is in my template file and it happens to be on line two. Okay. So I'm going to try and fix that. So back to my template file on my local machine, of course. And you can see that on line two, which is here, there's got some PHP code, which I probably should have been more careful with, and it doesn't look so good. So let me remove that, save it. So I think I've fixed up uh, that particular error. Now, while it was cool to be able to use Git within uh, Dev Desktop, I'm pretty comfortable with Git on the command line. Um, so now that I know that Aqua Cloud does work with Git, I'm going to try and do that instead of working within that little UI in Dev Desktop. So if I jump back into my Dev Desktop environment and I click here, uh, I can open up a console. So I'll just make that a little bigger. Great. So straight away, uh, you can see that Dev Desktop has been giving uh, us all the environment variables that are required um, to work with Drupal uh, on my local machine. Uh, and I've also been changed into uh, a directory locally, which has um, the code that I've been working with. So let me just check the status of that code. So I can see that the particular template file I've been working on is modified. So if I just check what's been modified. So yes, that big minus with the red uh, text is right. That's what I want gone. So let me commit that. So I'm going to go git number add that. And I'm going to say minus m. Uh, fixed syntax error or some similarly useful message. So that's committed. That's good. Uh, and now because Git, of course, is a distributed version control system, I've actually got to push it up um, so that it's available on Equi Cloud and to my other developers. So hit Git push. And that is uh, what we want to do. It's been pushed up. You can see that Dev Desktop has set it all up for us so that uh, I've got a distinct uh, version control repository that's hosted by Equia, and that's what I've been interacting with on the cloud. Coolies. Okay, so if I jump back into uh, Safari and look at my workflow, we should see that that code uh, has been pushed up, and we should be able to see that also in the log. So you know, just as I clicked into there, that had finished, uh, and that's my little commit that I'd made. You can see that I fixed the syntax error. That's the message that I'd given. And if I click into the details, I could see, you know, if anything had gone wrong during that code commit. The other thing I could do is um, look at notifications um, of other things that have been going on from other users. But unfortunately, because everyone's in Barcelona having a good time, there's nothing. It's just me. So if I look at the dev site, does that look okay now? Yeah. It appears okay. There's no white screen of death. There's no uh, Rick Astley. So now I'm feeling pretty good, um, like I've done it. So what have I done? So I managed to view the logs on the Aqua environment in real time. That was handy. Then I fixed the issue locally, which is a pretty simple fix. Um, and instead of committing via Dev Desktop, I actually fixed it from the command line client, which is something that I'm more comfortable with. So now I've got the slightly more scary uh, job of actually deploying it out into production and fixing the issue for good. So let's look at how we might do that. Okay, back to Safari. Just have to because of the way the screen's set up here, I have to keep closing PowerPoint, but that's okay. Back to Safari. Okay. So, we're back to our little environment management console. Now, within that, we've, we've spoken about dev stage and prod. Within each of those, we've got the code 
uh, the files and the database. Now, if you know Drupal, you know that those are kind of the three main components that make up a site. But because I'm going to do a deployment and because I want to be able to back out of it if something goes wrong, I need a point in time backup that I can go back to if there's a major issue. So how do I do that? So if I click on this little down arrow here, I have an option. Uh, I have a few options. But the one that I'm most interested in is in backing up the databases. So I do that. There, get a list of all the databases we have deployed on this site. And I'm going to back those all up. And again, we get another job kicked off in the task list, which will be logged, uh, and that I can see who did it and whether anything went wrong during that. So once that's done, what I'm going to do is actually deploy the code. And currently the code that's sitting on master is what I actually want to be in production. So how do I do that? So one of the ways that I can do that is by just simply dragging and dropping it from one environment to another. So if I just grab the code from here, drop it down on to production, Active Cloud will say to me, hey, I see that you're doing a deployment. Can you please provide a commit message because I want to know what you're deploying and why so that when someone else comes along, they've got some idea of why you did it. So I'm going to say... Uh, removed vandalism. Hit deploy. And as always, this will kick off a job in Apple Cloud and the code will be deployed. You can see that the production has now got a state of deploying. Um, and we've got the task running. And of course, I've kept the backup, so that means that if, if this does go wrong, which I hope it doesn't, um, I can back out of it. So we'll just wait for that to roll out. We can look at the log. Great, all done. And so we have some detail there about what's going on. I don't want to get too much into that, but obviously they're taking care of business. So now is the moment of truth. I am going to actually test it on production. So I'm going to go to my little bookmark here Open up production. Looks good. No vandalism. So, happy days. So let me just have a look and bask in what I've done for a minute. So, I deployed to prod using workflow tools and I have a backup just in case. And fundamentally, I got the rip roll gone and the bug is fixed. So I'm feeling pretty good. The immediate need that my boss was needling me about is, is out of the picture. But what I don't want is to then be interrupted later on because my boss has found something else. So I know that acquire has got some monitoring tools. It's beginning to all come back to me. So um, I'm going to go ahead and, and use those to check for systems and whether there's any security issues which might lead to some more vandalism, whether there's any performance issues which might lead to downtime or a slow site. And then we do have a spike coming up next week, so I want to make sure that we're prepared for that. So, Acquire Insight, okay. What is that? Let's have a look. So if I close down this show again. And jump back into Safari again. Okay, so I'm back in my, my interface and along the top here, at the top level menu, I am going to choose Insight instead of Cloud. The site's working, so I don't need to do any work on it immediately, but I do want to check the monitoring to see what's happening. So what this shows me is a bunch of metrics around and tests around things like performance, security, and best practices. Now, my overall score is 45%, which is not great. And I can see that there's some red alert issues here, which I'm going to have, a, have to have a look at. Overall, uh, performance is not terrible, 14 out of 20 issues resolved, but security and best practices aren't looking so good. Um, I can also see the uptime of the site over time, and you can see there's a couple of little blips there where we've uh, deployed that white screen of death code. But generally, it's looking pretty good, and it's actually working quite quickly, under 500 milliseconds for the most part. So my developer left me a few notes about how I might actually deal uh, with security updates. And 
I've also got some notes here uh, that Acquia's provided basically to give me an overview of what the actual issue is and, and how to go about looking at solving that. So let's have a look. I need to do this, and I've got these notes here that I'm just looking at from my developer. So back to Dev Desktop. Now, I know the code's up to date because I've just deployed it, and I'm going to open up another console. And what I'm going to do is use this tool that my developers recommended called Drush, which is the Drupal shell. And from my interaction with Acquia, I know that they allow me to control the sites uh, on Acquia Cloud directly from the shell using Drush, uh, using some things called aliases, and that's the notes I have. So first thing I'm going to do is check for uh, security updates with my little notes from my developer. So here we go. Drush update. Oops, not the DB, the code, please. Security only. So this means that Drush is going to go away and look at Drupal.org um, and check for which security updates are available. And sometimes this can take a little bit of time, but uh, I'd rather it took some time and got the right security updates than it worked quickly and broke my site, right? Um, but it does have to check every, every module to make sure that there's uh, something or not something. So while that's running, I might just uh, create a new branch uh, to work on. So let me open up yet another, sorry, open up yet another uh, console. And I am going to uh, create a new branch. So how do I do that? Get check out minus B for branch, uh, security updates. And I'm going to put a date on it to be a good citizen, 22nd of September 2015. Um, great. I'm just going to check on my updates. Still running. Okay. Cool. Okay, so in the meantime, I am going to push this branch up to uh, our staging environment so that I've got the environment in a state that's ready for me to test. Cool. So how do I do that? Now this is very much Git stuff, but we have full and native support for Git on Equip Cloud, so let me push up this new branch. Okay, so that's been pushed up to Equip Cloud. My update's still running. And if I jump back into the cloud, I'm going to deploy that tag into into the staging so that I've got a place to test um, that code when it's ready. So before when I deployed a, some code into an environment, I actually dragged it from dev into prod. This time around, I'm going to specify exactly uh, which particular Git branch I want to be deployed. So in this case, I've got this little, little icon here. If I click that, um, EquiCloud's going to read my Git repository and see all of the... Uh, bits and pieces that are available. So I'm going to choose this security updates branch. I'm going to just check that name. Yep. Deploy that. So that now when I push code onto that branch, it's going to go directly into my staging environment. While that's running, I'm also going to grab the latest copy of the files in the database from production. Um, so that I know that when I'm testing it, I'm testing against the most recent copy of code, uh, sorry, of content uh, from production. So in much the same way I deploy code, I can deploy files and databases from production down to stage, which is going to uh, make that as close as possible to production, uh, which is obviously a lot uh, safer for testing. So hopefully my long-running update is finally finished. It has. Great. So I can see in this case that I've got one, two, three, four updates available. Um, and I can also see that uh, Drush has given me a nice message that a backup is going to be kept. So although I've got a version control uh, back, uh, get out of jail free card, I've also got a backup that Drush is keeping for me, so that's handy. So I say yes, I want those. Uh, and... Drush is going to go ahead, download them, apply them uh, over the top of my existing modules uh, in such a way that they apply cleanly and I'm not having to clean up errant files that have gone all over the place. Okay. 
So once that's done, I'm going to push it up to production and I'll be able to run uh, some database updates. Cool. So I've applied pretty cleanly. Uh, the cache has been cleared out. Everything looks good. So once again, I'll do my git status. You can see lots of things have been changed. Over 500 files, so I'm just going to go and add all of those because I can't be bothered figuring out exactly which ones, and I'm sure it's fine. All those are in. Great, git commit minus m. My message is going to be added security updates for modules. All done, and now once I'm happy with that, I'm going to push that right up. Great, so that's been pushed to my security updates branch, uh, as you can see here. And if I jump back into Safari uh, and refresh the workflow, we should see that they've been pushed out. You can see that they're being pushed out right now, and that's just completed as we've been watching. So that's great, um, but my notes from my developer also say that I need to run database updates because uh, those code updates might have made changes to the database which need to run. It's a real Drupal-y thing. So I'm going to go and do that. Now, the other thing I know is that I can use Drush to interact directly with Acquia Cloud from my command line, so I don't need to log into servers and so on. I can just let Acquia's uh, tooling handle that. So uh, what do I want to do? So I want to run Drush. That's the first thing. But uh, the next thing is the special uh, name that I have, which is my... Um, unique name for my environment. So this is a unique name which I've uh, got in notes which is referring to my particular environment on Acquia Cloud and it represents an alias uh, file which contains all the SSH settings and so on to interact with that. I could interact with the development environment by putting that or I could do staging by putting that suffix or I could do prod by putting that. Um, but I want to interact with staging so I'm going to do that and I'm going to say please update the database for me. So if I do that, uh, this is going to connect into Acquia Cloud and say, oh great, no database updates are required at all. Um, so I can be pretty confident that given that I used the most recent database from production um, and I pulled down, uh, pushed up the most recent code from the security updates that we're in a good shape that it's going to work on, on prod as is. So what I'm going to do now is I am just going to do exactly the same thing in production. It's going to be very obvious that um, for the next person who comes along that I've deployed some security updates on the 22nd of September uh, and I can run those, those database updates in exactly the same way uh, that I did on staging. So what have we done? So we downloaded some security updates, uh, we tested in staging, and we re ran any required database updates that were on the Acquia environment as well as locally and so on, and we also got it out to prod, so I'm feeling pretty good about that. That means that we're pretty up to date, and I feel like I might be able to leave on time today, but the other thing that was happening in, the, in that uh, insight report is that there were outstanding performance issues, which... I don't really, I'm not as confident on how to deal with it. So what I'm going to do is talk to Acquia support. Uh, they're a big team of drupal -y people who know how to work with Drupal a lot better than I do. There's a lot of them. Uh, they're available 24-7. They speak a lot of languages. They're spread across four continents, and they've got about 250-plus years more experience with Drupal than I have. So... How do I actually deal with them? How do I get them to help me? Let's give that a shot. Once again, jumping back into Safari. This time I'm going to click on the help link, which is going to give me access into the support ticketing system. So I want to create a new support ticket. So I'm going to click the big orange button. 
and I am going to say that it is a Drupal application support issue as opposed to, say, a platform issue or another type of issue. And I'm going to say the urgency is high. So we do have a spike coming up that we know is likely to put a lot of load on the server, um, but it's not critical. My site's not down. Everything's still working, but it is high urgency. So let me just uh, write a little summary here. So we've got a spike expected this weekend. And we have a big spike in traffic expected this weekend, and my devs are away. Insider's reporting that there are some performance issues, and I'm worried that we won't survive. Could you help? Okay, so this is where, as if I'm not wearing enough Acquia stuff already, I put on the stylish hat, and I suddenly become Acquia support staff. All right, so let's just clear off all this stuff. So I'm the Acquia support guy. Um, I've received this ticket. Um, and I want to help this guy out. So what do I do? So the first thing that we should know about Acquia uh, support staff is that they have access to customer sites, uh, and they have full access to both the code and the actual running application. So obviously that's a very uh, sensitive thing to have the ability to do. So what we need is some kind of way of centrally managing that. And what we do at Acquia is have a thing called a bastion server, which means that all of our authentication goes through a group of central servers that are centrally managed. So we log into that server with three-factor authentication, uh, and then should we need to remove rights from someone or give rights to someone, we can do that from one place instead of having to chase them all across the internet. So as Acquia support, I'm going to log into that. I'm going to put in my password. I'm going to generate a one-time token. And once that's done, I should get a nice message saying I'm logged in and the Bastion connection is active. So that means I'm logged into a server somewhere in America uh, which is managing my authentication. So what I could do as Acquia support is I could go into Insight and look through the report directly. But because we kind of see this stuff a lot of the time, and because um, you know we we know uh, how to fix a lot of these issues directly without having to kind of reference the detail and insight, I can just run it from the local machine. So what I'm going to do is run, if I just clear that out, the Acquia hosting toolkit, and if I can remember, I think it's DC Barcelona D7 demo, is it? No, let me just get the name there. That one, uh, dot production, and I am going to run a lightweight audit. So kick that off, and this is going to go through and do what's called static analysis of the site, which means it's going to check a lot of the code and the configuration without actually bootstrapping the application. So you can see what we have here um, is a very quick and uh, easy to scan report which shows the things that are looking good on the site and the things that are not looking so good. So this is fundamentally the same data that's in Insight, it's just presented in a different way. But uh, what I could do as Acquia support is I could go back to the client and say, hey, these are these particular issues, um, you should go ahead and fix them, or we can just fix them ourselves directly. So it really depends on the client's preferences. but you know, we can dig in and find these very common issues that we see quite easily. So we have a lot of tooling that's like this. And this is a very simple one to show. Sometimes the issues aren't quite as simple. Um, you know, this, this is stuff that you can very quickly see and very quickly fix. Sometimes we need to dig a lot deeper into customer code to figure out what's slowing things down or um, limiting scalability and so on. So one of the things that we offer for a lot of our customers is the option to use uh, XHProf. Now, if you haven't heard of XHProf, it's an uh, application performance monitoring tool that was uh, actually written by Facebook, because they use a lot of PHP. Um, and it digs right down into your code and, and analyzes it at a function level. So this is not for all Acquia customers. Uh, it's only those who want to have it enabled. But in this particular case, um, this customer has had it enabled. So I can click in. And I can see a summary of the performance right down to the function level. 
you can see where some of the time's being spent in memcache and PHP and MySQL. And if I wanted to, I could dig right down uh, to a very fine grain level. And I'm not going to give a big demo on how to use XHProf because I don't really know how to use it that well myself and it's very complicated. But I can dig further and further down into every single function and see how much time they're taking, how much memory they're using and so on. Um, and that's very useful if there's something, that, a particular page that seems to be running for a very long time. We also actually offer to all of our customers New Relic, um, which is effectively the same thing, um, but it's just a little bit friendlier. And so, again, customers don't have to have it, um, but they might want to have it, uh, and it's just a case of enabling it on the Acre environment. You can see that as an Acquire support staff, I have access to a lot of those particular uh, sites. So for example, Drupal.com, um, I can dig in and see exactly the same thing. So it's exactly the same model of being able to dig down to the function level. Cool. So that's code analysis. The last kind of thing I want to show you that Acquire support do as, uh, in their support role is to look more at the um, server, the underlying servers. So I'm just going to clear that one out. And I am now going to, uh, obviously that was a little shortcut. I'm going to run a report against uh, the server that is running the production site um, for the last week. So I can set a, a time frame. In this case, I'm just going to do the last week. Uh, so if I run that, we will see a report open up, which will give us very fine grained detail of how each particular server in the stack is running. And that is all fed from Nagios data, which is kept centrally uh, in our monitoring tools. Um, but this is just put into a way that makes sense for a customer to be able to read, uh, as opposed to a long stream of logs. So we summarise the hardware, in this case is two balances and a single server. Uh, and as we see, we can dig into particular features, CPU load, memory use and so on. And so all of the things I'm showing you are very detailed and complex, but that's part of the service that we like to provide uh, should we need to dig into this level of detail. Cool. Okay. So uh, where are we? So what had support handled? And... I'm going to take the head off and go back to being a punter and not a support staff uh, member. So what does support do? So we audited the config and the code <coughs> to make sure that things were performing correctly. Uh, so we did a light audit. Excuse me. We also looked at server stats and we dove very deep uh, with XHProf. Support was also to, uh, able to notify the cloud operations team, who I haven't really spoken about, but they're the kind of back-end people who are monitoring all of the servers uh, in, our, in our cloud, and they will know now that there's a spike coming up. So should they see a whole lot of traffic suddenly coming out of nowhere, they know it's not a DDoS attack or something like that. So it just gives them a little bit of extra context for should they need to spin up additional servers or react in, the, in another way to cope with that spike. And that means that I can feel like my mind is at ease. Uh, there's an upcoming spike, I don't need to particularly worry about it myself. I'm not directly responsible for it. I've got support. So, my boss is happy. He says it's not bad. He's making this face. And even though it's Thursday afternoon, he's still asking me about Drupal 8. He's a pain. So what do I want to say about Acquire and Drupal 8? So first thing is that we're absolutely ready for Drupal 8. Everything that you saw here is supported in Drupal 8, um, including you know Insight, uh, the Drush instrumentation, and so on. If I jump back into my developer tools, my dev desktop, you can see I've actually got two sites here, uh, our D7 site, and I've also got uh, a D8 site. I can open up uh, the workflow for that by clicking this button. Hopefully I haven't been logged out because I'm on a different network. No, that's the wrong one. Let me just open the D8 one. And you can see exactly as we had with the D7, uh, I've got the D8. And exactly the same instrumentation. 
um, but with additional support for some D8 features. So you can install D8 and go, go for it. I'll show you that running. We have a nice D8 site. I'm all logged in. I've got the nice D8 uh, interface, and I'm happy days. So as a quick example, let me show you what I might do. Now, as you may or may not know, D8's not quite out yet. So what I want to do is install the developer module for Drupal 8 um, because that's something I could use to help me to debug my Drupal 8 site, which is still uh, in development and still relying on the or waiting on the release candidate to come out. So I'm going to use Drush version 8 this time, and I'm going to download the Devel module. So I can see that that's been uh, downloaded and I've been told which path and which modules are available. I'm going to create a new branch, so I'm going to go get check out minus B, devel for D8 or something. Not the best name, but that will do. I'm going to check the status, and I'm going to add in the new module. Oh, hello. Okay. Commit minus M. Added devel. I'll push that up. Probably be told to go away. I have been, so I'm going to set the new branch on Acquire Cloud. And again, we're pushed out uh, and we're enabled. No problem. So if I jump back into my workflow in exactly the same way, I can deploy. Uh, develop for D8, hit deploy, and out we go. So we support Drush 8 on the actual cloud environment as well. Um, a lot of the stuff I've been doing here is local, but we have full support for that. If I was then to, for example, uh, enable the module, enable... Um, I'll do it in the Drupal 8 site to show you actually. I think that might be better. Open up the site. Go to extend. And search for devel. I'm going to enable devel in this nice little module. And that will be installed within Drupal 8 and ready for, you, for use. And that's all done. If I then go back, I can start mucking around with it and breaking things. And there's Devel. If you've used it in Drupal 7, it's much the same thing. But obviously for Drupal 8, Great. So, to conclude, what have we done? And I uh, will take questions just in a second after I've gone through this. So, utilised Dev Desktop, we managed to fix an error. The, uh, not only was there the, the bad uh, vandalism, but we also fixed um, an error uh, in syntax by reading the logs in real time, then deploying that to prod. Uh, we used Acquia tools to monitor site performance and configuration. Then I was able to install the security updates, deploy and run the database updates with Drush on Acquia Cloud directly. I've also been able to get in touch with Acquia support who helped uh, with the performance and scaling, so I have got that handled for me, which means that I can go uh, away to Secret Cinema and listen to Goldie dropping some Metalheads tracks uh, and have a good time and be relaxed. And that is it. But uh, if you do have any questions, uh, I'm happy to take them. We've also got David here from our products team who is involved in some of the future work that we're doing um, in the cloud generally, but specifically also around Drupal 8. So if you do have any questions, feel free to ask. Sure. Is 
So the question was around deploying Drupal 8 uh, to Acquia Cloud and having some issues with that via Dev Desktop. Did you want to? Yeah, I'll give you a mic. Specific issue, but, yeah. Well, I don't know if you guys can read that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I'm not specifically aware of that issue, but uh, definitely Dev Desktop will support Drupal 8. Okay. Um, and I think at this point, because it's we're not even at the release campaign, there's a few things that still need to be done like that to kind of uh, to make things work. If you are having particular troubles like that, feel free to come down to the booth and there'll be people there that can help you. Okay, sure. We're, yeah, like as I say, come down to the booth or post a support ticket and we can help out. Yeah. Any other questions? No? Oh, okay. Thank you very much. Quite a, it's a very kind of, without any flashy new stuff, it's kind of a um, difficult demo to give one. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Cool.
Yeah, I don't know where that, I mean, sometimes I never know where the misconceptions come from. Yeah. The key thing is, let's get them along with reality. Yeah, I feel like, so you would know about, I mean, dev tools is being built up, mm -hmm. dev desktop is getting more developers, that's great. It's like an entry level job, though. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. you know, Drupal DM has just come out with Apache and Nginx, Ubuntu, and Red Hat support. So essentially, you can just pull up your Docker container on anything you want. Mm -hmm. and then import your Acquia Drush databases and have a really great developer experience from there as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, the problem with the whole thing is it's not going to Yeah. So, I mean, if you've got, got the diagram that showed, I wasn't at the beginning, but did you show a diagram that just ended 